Which brings us to approval of the agenda. Any changes? I'll make a motion to approve. attend. 
Um, they are going to do some different festivities, and it should be a, a great uh, opportunity for us. And then my monthly luncheon on August 26th, Electrical Works is sponsoring it, and Mark Hohenstein from Duke Energy, he is going to be doing a presentation. He does a great presentation on how Duke determines economic development and areas that they need to invest in and prepare and get ready. It's a really cool uh, presentation. If you've never seen it, I've seen it, and I'm so lucky we were able to get him for this luncheon. So this is one that I recommend being that, especially if you're concerned about that in the future, uh, and that will be on August 26th. The rest of the information is here, and if you have any questions, I am available. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Does anyone have any questions, Kansas? Okay, thank you. No, thank you very much. How about from the public comment? Are they allowed to ask questions? Mr. Sertner, uh, you can email the chamber uh, at any time. Thank you. All right. Um, which brings us to swearing in by city attorney and disclosure of ex parte communication. Thank you, Mayor. We have some rezonings on the agenda today, but they are only on first reading that we don't discuss. So there will be no um, uh, quasi judicial hearings. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Which brings us to reading of all ordinances and resolutions into the record. Ms. Novak. Thank you, Mayor. We have one resolution and three ordinances at first reading. Um, resolution 2020-18, a resolution of the City of Tiberias, Florida, relating to the State Revolving Fund SRF Loan Program, authorizing SRF Loan Agreement DW350961 for the Lake Francis Water Distribution and Piping Replacement Project. Approves Amendment Number 1 of the loan, extending the project timeline, providing for conflict, severability, and an effective date. Ordinance 2020-06, an ordinance of the City of Tiberias, amending the boundaries of the city by annexing approximately 119.57 acres of land located at 27521 State Road 19, rezoning said property from Lake County Agriculture District A to City of Tiberias Residential Single Family RSF2 and City of Tiberias Wetlands Preservation Area WPA, subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tiberias Council. Providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Ordinance 2020-08, an ordinance of the City of Tiberias, amending the boundaries of the city by annexing approximately 1.72 acres of land located at the northwest corner of State Road 19 and Slim Haywood Avenue, rezoning said property from Lake County Agriculture District A to City of Tiberias Highway Commercial C2, subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tiberias Council, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. And Ordinance 2020-09, an ordinance of the City of Tiberias, Florida, amending the Tiberias Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map 2020, providing for a change in future land use designation on approximately 1.72 acres of property from county urban medium density to city commercial COM, for property generally located at the northwest corner of State Road 19 and Slum Haywood Avenue, providing for severability and conflicts and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Novak. Which brings us to the consent agenda. Is there anyone who wants to pull anything from the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Singer, what is your vote? Uh, yes. Motion carries to five to zero, which brings us to resolutions, which we have done with the staff today. And ordinances, we have several for first reading, but we do not discuss the ordinances on the first reading. It's just to alert the public, so that at second reading, we have further discussion. We have nothing at second reading, which brings us to general government. Tab 9, Mayor's Youth Council Syllabus. Uh, Mr. Drew. During the June 17th council meeting, the council expressed a desire to agendize and discuss the Mayor's Youth Council syllabus with a recommendation to increase the uh, criteria um, for going through the program. Uh, City Administrator Clerk met with Ms. Farnsworth, the Assistant Principal who also administers the program on behalf of the high school to discuss the syllabus for the upcoming year. I've attached the proposed um, new syllabus uh, and the highlights are is that we've increased the attendance of the meeting to at least 1.5 hours with the goal of attending the entire meeting. We have 
doubled the outside meetings from uh, two to four. We've doubled the shadowing of departments from one to two. And the only other note, I've uh, uh, just as a reminder, Vice Mayor will participate in the selection committee for the students that will be selected. Uh, so I think we have a much more robust syllabus and we're more involved in selecting the students and this is before you for your approval. If you approve it, then we'll send it back to the high school and they'll start their process. Thank you, Mr. Zuri. Uh, Campbell, do you have any questions or suggestions for changes? No, but I just want to say thank you for addressing this. I feel much better about it now. Thank you. Subdivisions or similar developments undergoing construction 
are allowed uh, a temporary sign for each parcel, and that is a maximum of five square feet in size. Uh, no permit is required for temporary signs. All references to message content uh, is removed from our regulations, and no signs are permitted on vacant property. The City of Tavares Code Enforcement has received complaints regarding temporary signs being located on vacant property in violation of our LDRs. The exclusion of vacant land from being permitted to have signs on them may pose a challenge for property owners wishing to market their property for sale with real estate for sale signs. It also prohibits political advertising signs being placed on vacant property during election time as it prohibits signs of all types regardless of the content. Staff is requesting that City Council uh, give direction regarding a possible amendment to the land development regulations that would allow temporary signs on vacant land consistent with number and size requirements for developed parcels. For example, Council could permit Temporary signs, not just for developed property, but also vacant property. And if this is the direction selected, then real estate signs and political signs will be permitted for a period of 90 days on vacant property. Uh, there's the issue of enforcement for both developed and vacant property, and council may want to require a permit for temporary signs so that code enforcement can uh, enforce the duration of the temporary sign. Uh, staff is not making a recommendation on this matter. Um, the city attorney has reviewed this report for legal sufficiency and is noting that the ordinance in its current state is legally sufficient uh, with no challenges needed. Um, should council decide that the ordinance is, should, should keep the ordinance, temporary signs of any kind would not be permitted on vacant property. Uh, I can't answer any questions. I just want to add, just to frame the issue, because it's a lot that um, was uh, put in that. Very well done, Mike. Um, just to frame the issue, currently, the law ordinance that you have does not permit any temporary signs on vacant property. It allows temporary signs on improved property. And the question before you is, do you want to keep it the same? And if you do, code enforcement will um, enforce the law that all temporary signs be removed from vacant property. Or do you want to amend the law uh, allowing temporary signs on vacant property for 90 days? If you want to allow them for 90 days, it's recommended that you get a permit. That's sort of a high-level, quick overview of what's before you, of course, you could come up with your own uh, other options too. Back to you, Mary. Thank you, Mr. Drury. And we did get a request to speak from the public, Mr. Santoria. Would you please say your name and address for the clerk? And remind us when you have three minutes. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Drury, city staff. Mr. Williams, Kerry Santoro, Royal Harbor. Uh, I think it's very appropriate at this time to take this up. Uh, as I travel around the county, Tiberias is the worst city when it comes to political science. We are totally inundated with them. Um, I applaud Mr. Fitzgerald for trying to do something, but you look out there and some of these people, if they win the primary, they go on to the general election. Are you going to make them take their signs down? It's a losing battle, but I think something has got to be done about all these political Right. You've got big signs and little signs of the same candidates together. Really? Is it the person that has the most signs win the election? This is absolutely out of control. And I think, like I said, as I travel around the county, no other county is like this. I don't know if it's because we're the county seat or not, but uh, this is absolutely disgusting for the city to areas. Drive down highway here on State Road 19 and tell me that you don't feel the same way. I try it. Thank you, Mr. Santora. And uh, I don't have any other comments from the public, so.
next time, make sure you fill it out completely with the tab number. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, David Surar. Uh, you know, I was a candidate. Active. I did my petitions, but I got an order for me. And science, I help everybody out. You know what it takes to be a leader. Your people know what it takes to run the city. It takes me a vote it in. Mr. Senator, please address And I want my people to know that the signs that are out there, these are true people that are trying. Mr. Sir, it's not about the content of the signs, it's about the regulation of the signs. So do you have a comment on the regulation of the signs? The regulation of the signs? Well, I think there shouldn't be a regulation. I mean, the true citizens that have property to be able, that are healthy of them, have the permission from the owner to be on the signs should be there during election time. Prior and the general election. Mr. Sir, we're discussing vacant property sign regulation. Well, so I heard somebody complain that the signs were up. Well, my, I might be appointed to take jobs for one minute. No, and that doesn't take me a moment. That's quite my job. So you don't want it to be regulated? I don't want it to be regulated at all. Is there anything else you'd like to add, no, Mr. No. No. All right, well, thank you. you know, people don't know what it feels like, but I run for office. I run a primary. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of work to be in a position. Thank you, Mr. Serger. I've had another request uh, from the audience. Uh, Mr. Yo, if you please say your name and address for the record, and please remember you have three minutes. Vance Yoakum, 12619 Milwaukee. Uh, I just, the statement was made that the you know, signs are terrible for politics and everything, but in these, this day, the, the daily commercial doesn't even cover half the races. The Orlando you, Sentinel. Do you have anything to address about that? The signs, yes. The signs, you should keep on allowing political signs to be there because there's fewer and fewer avenues for anybody to do that. Tavares groups on Facebook prohibit political dialogue, and so nobody can get the word out anymore, and so uh, I think that we need to have as many avenues as possible for people to run in 90 days before the date of the election, and maybe some size issues, but political signs should be continued to be used. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else from the audience before we move on and close public input? All right, well, I'm going to close public input at this time. Council? Is there any stakeholders leaving the ordinance as we have it? Uh, no, so I think the ordinance is legal as you have it and it's enforceable. Um, the question came up from code enforcement because the, the ordinance was changed after the Gilbert decision in my detail of the my entire career as a city attorney until the Gilbert decision, we had all sorts of categories of sign, off-site, off on-site, or public, you guys learned in law school, just like I did, uh, political signs, for sale signs. After the Gilbert case, the way I read it, and John and Mike read it, is that you don't look at what's written on the sign to determine whether it's legal. You have to look at what's written on the sign to determine whether it's legal. It's not legal. So, there is no such category as political signs anymore, so, or for sale signs, or temporary signs, there's temporary signs, but those are a structural definition, not a content definition. So, the question is, when we enforce this, and Chris enforces it, he will enforce it to the letter of the law, which means if you've got a sign, a temporary sign, as defined in the ordinance, on a vacant piece of property, he's going to cite you. You don't have to drive very far to find those in Tiberias, and you're going to, Chris is going to be a busy man for a few weeks. But that's legal to do it like that, and that's what the ordinance says. So just understand that under the new Supreme Court law, the brush, uh, the brush brushes broadly, and it will, it will take down some offensive signs, and it will probably take down some signs that you'll hear from from your constituents. And just adding to your question, can you leave the ordinance as is? The answer is yes. And what does that mean? That means you can put political signs, real estate signs on any developed property. Nothing's going to change for uh, getting your message out to the community on um, selling property or uh, political signs on um, developed property. Right. I yes. have political signs all over my, uh, over my yard, my office. They will not be affected by that. It's the issues of the, the vacant lots and 
he is going to enforce it, and there are going to be, it's going to result in some enforcement cases that will surprise you. I mean, you don't have to drive around to Barry's very long to find vacant property that has for sale signs. Those would not be allowed. Um, and, um, but and we're, stuck with, we're stuck with what the law says about con regulating content based on, or regulating signs based on content, and that's just not something we can do anymore. So there is no more category. We used to have the first sign ordinance I ever wrote for Tiberius. We have an ordinance required that had for political signs. And why would we be up so much before the election and so much after the election? You can't make that distinction. One, one thing that has changed since those days, I, I don't think it affected the Supreme Court's decision on this issue, um, but with technology, most much real estate is sold on, on Zillow and online. So if you do put your sign out there for 90 days and you let the world know that your property's for sale, after that 90 days, um, for the next um, however many months that is, uh, you're, you are, under the Supreme Court ruling, if you do have a 90-day window for signs, you'd be selling your property online and then putting your signs. So you are correct. It will affect uh, people selling uh, property. The only change I see from those old laws where you could regulate based on content is the Internet's gone a long way when it comes to selling things. Uh, Mr. Williams. Since the Gilbert decision, have you run into anything, whether it be binding law or just advisory law? Have you seen anything where a city's dealt with this successfully? Can you provide us? And, and Mr. Williams, you have a good one. You know way more than I do. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. And I'm trying to put you on the spot, Mr. Williams. I can tell you the Gilbert case is what the common law professor used to call a watershed case. I mean, it, it was a big deal and it caused I went to a, my annual municipal law seminar uh, in 2016, I think when it got passed or 17, and the presenter... Microphone. I'm oh, sorry, I thought I had it on. The presenter told us at that time that uh, the Gilbert decision, after the Gilbert decision, that he doubted that there would be any uh, constitutional sign ordinance remaining in the entire United States. That's because we, under the old laws, we used to regulate signs based on whether they were off-site or on-site. You can only tell if it's on-site or off-site by reading it. So that went away with the Gilbert decision. Everything we learned in law school has gone away. So, yes, there's a whole bunch of litigation out there. There's a whole bunch of questions. There's not a good, solid answer. John and I looked at the uh, IMLA. IMLA is the International Municipal Law Association, part of the IMCA, ICMA, is that right, John? And they've got a model ordinance very similar to ours. Um, and the question is really what you want your community to look like without reading the signs. I mean, if you go to all travel in Florida, in South Florida, you go down to Boca Raton, or you go to some of the areas down there, you can't find the Burger King. I mean, as the signs are, to the extent they're allowed, they're very, very small, and many, many signs are, are regulated out completely. As long as you treat them equally, you don't have to allow signs in your city. So that's just a policy question for you guys. There's not a great answer because to get rid of some of them that are offensive, you're probably going to get rid of some that, you know, again, the broke them. The brush, brush is broad. And I, and I think what cities across America are struggling with is the balance. It's a balancing act, right? With scales. And I we have to make a choice to either do them forever or live on the nine days. We have to make a choice. So it fall off the fence. So I fall off the fence. I'm not going to make a question on this one. Well, since we're continuing the discussion, Ms. Fister. Yeah, I, uh, I think the world has changed a whole lot. I think most purchases are done offline now because where most people do their shopping is online. So I'm not really worried about the, I know we can't make this definition as to what type of sign it is, but since y'all brought it up, so that's the real term, the political signs, we know, let them go back out and do it the hard way. Uh, I spend more time out talking to people and shaking hands than I do putting up signs. So I think that's not gonna bother the political world, but 
in this day and age, we've become so offensive. You know, things are just so offensive to everyone. And I really don't understand that. But it's okay. It's their right to be offended. And I think I worry mostly about the younger people. I worry about the younger people. And I think everyone should be entitled to those innocent years. And when I think about signs, derogatory signs, truly de derogatory signs or offensive signs that would even be offensive to a younger person, you know, we, we can't make that determination. So with that being said, since we would have to allow that, I'm for no more signs. Only because I'm trying to keep that innocence because there are people who would do the, the signs that would be offensive to others. Thank you, Ms. Mister. Um, <clears throat> I like Mr. Singer's uh, suggestion if they're going to have inside people on vacant property that be limited to 90 days uh, so that it can still be regulated and it dictates the size of the signs so they can't be there very long. So that if someone wanted to put up signs for a church event or for a campaign, it would be plenty by how much time and it doesn't prevent them from using their own property for their own interests. Um, any other discussion? I've got to agree with Vice Mayor Fister. It's a visual pollution to have that out there. You know, we eliminated those drop boxes. We, we had rules for those. We, we eliminated certain things. We need to be consistent with the image that we're trying to, pers uh, you know, have in the city of Tavares. So I think it's really important to clean it up. Like the technology's out there. We don't need to have a sign that just to have it out. And I agree, we're out of time where we need, we need to start cleaning up our environment, you know, whether it be visually or just every which way. We, we need to start moving in a different direction. Uh, I think Mr. Singer was saying, let's treat vacant property the same as we treat uh, improved property, I think. Mr. Singer, that's what you were saying? Yes. Number three, every land parcel excluding vacant property, we can just take that phrase out. So if we treat improved property the same as vacant property, uh, because we're not allowed to talk about this until we're here, we have to talk about this while we're here. Are you guys talking about no signs, period? Or are you talking about signs only safe nowadays? The current regulation is no signs are fitted on vacant property. We're discussing whether we want to change the current status, which is no signs of vacant property, or we want to change it so number three says including vacant property. That's the only discussion right now. Are we including vacant property in regulation, or are we saying no signs of vacant property at all? And that means they stay there for 90 days, correct? The same as every other piece of property. And remember what those signs can say, though how big they could be and what they could say. I mean, I want you to think about uh, that. Yes, we were talking about this. My dog can beat up your dog. Well, I here's put a sign on my property that's horribly offensive. My dog can beat up your dog. Okay, and we're talking about a vacant piece of property now. That 90 days, is that going to change whether the sign is put on this corner, whether it's put in a different corner, because now it's in a different location? Are we going to go into that as well? I think that's a legitimate question. Current ordinance does not. It would be limited 90 days to the, to be on the property within the four corners. The fully okay, the actual okay. I mean, I think legally, I think you could do that. You said you can keep it for 90 days in one location on the property, and then you have to move it to another location. I think you right. can do that, but that's not what your current ordinance says. And a person who lives in a residential home. They could put any sign they wanted to to say anything in their yard. Today, that's the way it is. For as long as they wanted it there. Ninety days Nine today. Days. Yeah, and if if you do make a change, it would be good if you um, require a permit. Can we go sign free? So Unless you're a commercial person, business with a. As the city city attorney said, as long as you treat everyone equally. You can say no temporary signs. In the uh, city of Tavares, you can say temporary signs 90 days for vacant and 
improved property, or you could say temporary signs only improved property. Or you could say no temporary signs, and then you have to get a permit, and it has to be hurricane standards and things of that nature. To put a sign in your yard, they would have to do that. C currently, you can put a temporary sign in your yard for 90 days. You could change the law that says you um, can't do that, as long as you treat everybody equally. And you could put a sign in your window, yeah. though. If you have a for sale sign, you could put it in your window. You could put a political sign in your window. You could put, I don't like cats. You could put anything you wanted in that window. Then you probably could paint the side of your house. <laughs> well, hopefully not in the city of Art, art, art house. I, I would just, I would like to be done with the signs. I really would. I would just like to be done with the signs. Go pull a permit if you want one out there for 90 days. But done with the signs. Just done with them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Well, obviously, if you don't have a permit, it's almost unenforceable. So, you, no permit, how can you enforce it? I don't know when it went up, I don't know if it ever came down, you know. Uh, we have systems in place that come in, pull permits. Mike, I mean, your, your team can handle that. Yes, we would do a minimum charge permit for that. You're only allowed two, is it? Two temporary signs on a piece of property. Yeah, two per folio, and they can only be of a certain size. I can't remember how many square feet. Yes, and temporary signs will not exceed six feet in height, not exceed 32 square feet in copy area, not be uh, electric or a portable sign, not obstruct the visibility of a permanent sign, not be illuminated, not be erected on vacant property unless associated.
so they make it very easy to regulate. And then, as far as all other occupied property or group property, it's very clear who the owner is, so if it's over 90 days, you know exactly who you can speak with. So, does council have any other questions or discussion? I'll just note to you all again that this is only, this is coming to you for a direction to the staff and me to prepare any changes if you decide to make any changes. So it's not, you're not voting on an ordinance time. You're giving us direction on what to do. And that'll have two readings? We would have two readings. And that'll have public input? Sure. And, and, that, and that will give you two months to continue to dialogue with your constituents and think about it. Or if the, the attorney is correct, we, we, um, good point. If you leave it alone, if you leave it alone, we'll tell Buddy, or not Buddy, but um, Chris, that this is the law and this is how we interpret it. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I'm going to make a motion that we have no signs except by permit only for 90 days. On all property? All. All property. Including vacant property. Including vacant property. Okay. So. We have a motion for the second. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, four to one. Which brings us to the permit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're changing the ordinance that you must have a permit and you're limited to 90 days on either um, improved or vacant property. So you're allowed a temporary sign for no longer than 90 days. You must pull a permit and uh, it's either temporary or vacant. Basically, it's the same ordinance you have, only you're going to re remove the vacant piece and you're going to add a um, permit. You're really making two little changes. You're removing the word vacant and you're saying you got to get a permit. For clarification, just for drafting, is the permit to be sought per parcel? So, if, under Roy's example, if he wants to put up 100 signs, does he have to come and get permission from 100 property owners and apply for 100 permits? Yeah, okay, it's per portfolio. Yeah, okay, I understand. Well, I believe that concludes that tab, which brings us to tab 12, City Council consideration of an amendment to lay development regulations for short-term vacation rentals. Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mayor. Short-term vacation rental properties have become an increasingly popular alternative to hotels uh, for individuals that are traveling. What began as a cottage industry has now become prevalent throughout many communities worldwide. Uh, a report published by the University of Central Florida's Rosen College of Hospitality Management shows that the economic impact of Florida's vacation rental business uh, exceeds $27 billion. Pursuant to Florida statute, a local law, ordinance, or regulation may not prohibit vacation rentals or regulate the duration or frequency of rental of a vacation rental. The growth of the short-term rental industry poses challenges for preserving the character of residential subdivisions because of the greater influx of transient residents. Municipalities may adopt short-term rental regulations that pertain to property registration, enforcement of issues such as noise, parking, and trash collection. City staff research regulations in Florida and found examples in the city of Orlando and in Miami-Dade County. The city of Orlando passed an ordinance in 2018 regulating owner-occupied home sharing. And this regulation was reviewed by the Tiberias City Attorney, and the attorney presented the following examples of how a homeowner would be in violation of the Orlando ordinance. Uh, example one, if I'm going on a cruise or vacation and I allow someone to house sit and care for my pets while I'm gone, I would be in violation of the ordinance. Example two, if my elderly parent lives with me and stays at the house while I take a business trip, I would be in violation of the ordinance. Example three, if my college roommate from Colorado and I decide to trade houses for a week in the summer and experience different regions, I would be in violation of the ordinance. Miami-Dade County passed an ordinance in 2017 regulating vacation rentals as well. This 
regulation was reviewed by the city attorney, and it's the attorney's opinion that this type of regulation may be cumbersome for Tiberius to enforce, taking into consideration requirements for staff to license, inspect, collect fees, and have the ability to enforce and penalize offenders. Miami-Dade has approximately 39 full-time staff members to enforce vacation rental regulations. At the July 15, 2020 meeting, City Council received a request from a homeowner at the Groves of Bay Tree subdivision for City Council to consider regulating short-term vacation rentals within the city limits of Tavares because the homeowner believed her neighbor was engaged in renting out space in their home, which she considered a nuisance due to the activity and the parking of cars on the street. And council instructed staff to review regulating Airbnbs or vacation rentals and provide uh, council some information. In addition to researching state law and other regulations, uh, staff reviewed the Groves of Bay Tree HOA regulations. And there are references to two articles in those regulations that state, nothing shall be done which may be a nuisance or an unreasonable annoyance to the neighborhood. And also, vehicles shall not be permitted to park on the street of the subdivision. The HOA and resident could exercise enforcement of these existing regulations and address the issue previously presented to council. And uh, the HOA could also add regulations to their existing covenants. The city attorney has confirmed that homeowners associations may limit short-term rentals by restrictive covenant. And the city attorney has made a recommendation against the city of Tiberias of regulating short-term rentals. Staff is recommending that city council move to take no action, uh, allowing governing homeowners associations to regulate on their own and enforce their own short-term regulation, uh, short-term rental regulations. The options are for City Council to follow that recommendation, take no action, or to direct staff to propose an ordinance similar to the City of Orlando or Miami Dade. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. <clears throat> I do next request from the audience. So, uh, first, I have Mr. Santora. Can you please come forward and say your name and address with the clerk, and remember that you have three minutes. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Drury, city staff, Mr. Williams, Gary Santor, Will Harbor. Many years ago, our community tried to enforce something like this because they found out that people were using it. The residents went up in arms. It never passed. Our attorney gave a legal opinion that says as long as somebody is using the house according to our deed restrictions, you can't tell somebody what they're going to do with their house. So in our community, we are an age-restricted community, which means you have to be over 55, you have to be 55 or over. One person in the house has to be at least 55 years old, and then anybody else has to be at least 40. Why would the city want to go there? Are you going to be going around, and in this case, I know we're taking from an HOA, they can put something in their deep restrictions and take care of this, but I do not believe this is something that the city wants to go into. Are you going to be knocking on people's doors and giving them an ID check to find out whether they live there or not? I don't think you want to do that, I don't think our police department needs to do something like that. So I totally agree. Leave it alone. Let the HOAs, let their own communities deal with it themselves. Don't push it off on a city to do something. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Santoro. Uh, next, we have uh, Charles Thompson. Would you please come forward and see your name and address for the clerk? Remember, you have three minutes.
Ms. Ortega, if you please come forward and see your name and address, and please remember that you have three minutes. And speak loudly, sir, we can hear you. Yes, 
something we can't possibly enforce. But I want to make sure we take the right route before we, you know, as far as parking is concerned, I'm going to do it to DMV. Just strictly parking both of them. Ms. Ortega, I hope that you're hearing what the Chief is saying to you and what I'm saying to you, ma'am. I do not think that this council can provide you the relief that you seek. The relief that you seek will come through code enforcement and law enforcement now, if at all. But there are some things that we cannot do. We cannot tell a private property owner what they can do with their private property now. Just like we can't tell you what you can do with your private property. I think that is an improper motion for government to take against a private property owner. Ma'am, this, you had your opportunity, this is my opportunity. I can see it coming. I can see it coming. Mr. Stevenson, please remember you're supposed to be addressing council. Ma'am, we can't restrict private property owners' rights. Your complaints would be the same if the private property owner was doing what you claim the renters are doing. I'm afraid I would not agree with providing you the relief that you seek. I'm going to have to say that I don't want to do that. Robert Frost wrote a book called Mending Fences a long, long time ago. In that book, or I should say poem, I shouldn't say book, in the poem, Mending Fences, one of the most famous quotes I've ever heard in my life, good fences make good neighbors. I'm sorry, ma'am, it's an enforcement issue. But I wanted to address you because I know you have a concern. You have the right to hear what we think. That's what I think. And other folks can address you now or address the public. That's what I think, man. We can't restrict private property. We can't do that. No, Ms. Ortega, public input is closed, and just for my council, we're supposed to be addressing council members. So is there any further discussion amongst the council? Mr. Singer? Ms. Fister? Yeah, I, um, I feel sorry for you. I really do. And, you know, I understand this. I'm not a good neighbor, but again, um, I understand, I mean, you're working with the chief and your HOA or whatever, and I think that's the way to go because I don't think we could provide any relief. So with that, I'm going to make a motion to uh, not move forward with any of this. I'll second that motion. So you have a motion and a second to take no action yeah. in this time. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Singer, what is your vote? October 10th, October 30th, October Fest, Blue Fest. 
We all know that Boo Fest is drunk or treat. It brings thousands of children to the downtown. We all know that the schools have uh, decided to uh, recommend that children stay home, and uh, we know that parents aren't going to be very excited about sending their children to um, a downtown um, trucker treat. Um, it's probably not going to go uh, be well attended, and so that's why we're recommending that um, uh, those be canceled. So that's uh, my recommendation: is that we uh, keep Monster Splash, we keep the Christmas parade celebration, we take the saved dollars, and we plan on another event for when this thing is done to um, get people to come back to the downtown. And you might want to do three small events, you might want to do one large event, that will be a decision that we will bring back to you as soon as we uh, figure out where the bell curve is on COVID-19 um, and when it's over with. And I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Um, I did not receive any comments or requests to speak from the public, so I'll close the public input at this time. Cancel, do you have any questions? Mr. Stevenson. I think Ms. Wade is just going to say we should set aside that 53000 and change, not only just for a street party. I, I said street party the last time we met as if I was being uh, uh, flippant about it. I was not being flippant about that. I think Ms. Boyd just would agree with me that 53000 should either be spent to celebrate the end of this job. Dear God, please let it in. Um, or we put it in reserve. I think Ms. Boyd is the latter one is probably more accurate. Uh, any further discussion from council? I have a question. Uh, Ms. Jordan, the uh, re events, can you just tell me? Uh, which funds those uh, amounts would cut from? Yeah, the Lake County Folk Festival was general fund. Uh, Rocktoberfest was the TIFF fund, correct? Correct. And the Boo Fest is um, general fund. Thank you. So right now we're just talking about um, canceling those events and putting $53,000 a holding account until we make a decision later on. Correct. I will bring back the 53000 back to you and you will make a decision at a later date to either put it in reserves or um, put together another event. Or three events. And also the money that's in the general fund, I mean, those could be used for other things other than uh, events, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion from council? Uh, well, I'll be sad to miss Boo Fest this year because giving out uh, Harry Potter jelly beans is my favorite treat every year, slash drink. So, um, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve what we approve. I have a motion and a second to approve staff's recommendation. Mr. Singer, what is your vote? Aye. Everyone? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5 to 0. Which brings us to tab 14. Uh, uh, the approval of resolution 2020-18 of the SRF Lake Grace Water Distribution Piping Project Fund, DW350961, Amendment 1. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members of council. Um, a little back, I'll give you a little background first. On December 19, 2018, the City Council authorized the acceptance of a state revolving loan for a project known as DW350961 for the Lake Francis Water Distribution Piping Replacement Project. Um, the SRF loan uh, document um, for construction activities was executed on January 7th of 2019 in the amount of $829,780. This excluded capitalized interest or loan service fees. The loan financing rate for the loan was 1.01% per annum. Resolution 2018 authorizes Amendment 1 to SRF Loan 359061, which provides an extended timeline for construction activities for the project and 
also provides increased funding in the amount of $34,752 to reflect the actual low bid previously approved by the City Council. The salient points in the Amendment 1 is extension of the project construction timeline through February 15, 2022. The first semi-annual loan payment due August 15, 2022. Semi-annual loan payments due thereafter August 15th and February 15th every year until the loan has been, been paid, repaid. Um, the first semi-annual loan payment is in the amount of $24,770. And the increased amount is $34,752. And that's the increases the dispersable amount of the loan. Uh, resolution 2020-18 authorizes the mayor to execute loan documents for Amendment 1 um, for the Low Lake Francis water distribution piping project with the FDEP for construction activities. Um, everything else in the loan uh, remains unchanged. There are a few differences for audit concerns for me. Um, there, um, the loan is for 20 years, and there are two options before you to approve resolution 2020-18 or not approve resolution 2020-18. And I'll just mention the loans being increased um, in the amount is because the low bid came in a little bit larger than the estimated amount of the of the project that the loan is written for. And due to COVID-19 and, and the extended review by the state of the bid, they needed to extend the timeline for the city. Thank you, Ms. Um, I did not receive any requests to speak from the public, so I'll take a look at it this time. Does council have any questions for Ms. Hogan? Uh, or for Mr. Clark, Mr. Singh? If I could. Um, yeah, I, I know that the, uh, the residents of uh, Lake Francis Estates have been very excited about this project. And, you know, it seems like it, it keeps getting delayed and delayed. And, you know, I've, I've heard from them that they're not happy with the situation that have been uh, taking so long. I know uh, this came before council just a couple of meetings ago, but uh, at that time, the project completion date was uh, December of 2021. And now we're pushing it back to February of 2022. Uh, and I know that, you know, there's always unforeseen issues that do come up. This has, you know, been going on for quite some time. Uh, I just, I don't understand why we have, you know, the other 34,000 that's being added on to the loan. I don't understand why we're taking the extra two months. Uh, I mean, if we don't approve this, does that mean that the project would be hurried along? What, what does it mean if we don't uh, approve this? Well, I think you would have to come up with the $34,000 from your general fund and to subsidize the construction uh, contract of the low bid. Um, so you could do that and just keep the loan um, short, $34,000. And then um, as, far as, uh, as far as not uh, um, allowing the contractor the additional six, was it 60 days we gave? 70 days, uh, I think he would just have a claim against the city for the 70 days and we could go into arbitration um, and determine whether or not the 70 days was warranted based on the state's delayed review due to COVID. Um, so there's options there, they're not good options. Um, I don't think we would uh, do well in mediation um, for the additional time they need. And obviously we'd have to look into the general fund uh, and probably go to reserves to get the 34,000. I just, I personally, I don't support the you know, fact of having to extend this another 70 days. Okay, any other discussion from council or questions? And I'll make a motion to approve option one. I'll second the motion. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve. Is there any further discussion? And Mr. Clark, if we do this, will the project get done? Yes. For sure. Yes. Okay. Um, then, uh, Mr. Singer, how do you vote? No. Everyone? All right. Uh, motion carries four to one. Which brings us to TAP 15, budget workshop, a five year capital improvement plan.
you've got a, a front version in front of you in your um, folder if you can't see the presentation. This is a rather short presentation. I was going to see it up and walk, but I think I can pretty much uh, run uh, through the presentation from here. But if anyone can't hear me or needs me to stop or has additional questions, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions, or Fred is in the audience, he's been working diligently on budget as well as the um, capital improvement plan. So. Okay. I've, I've got a new clicker here next door named Mike, so really enforce the camps. Again, just the broad budget goals for the city as a whole, increased reserves, fairly compensated employees, include street paving in our, in, our, in the budget, maintain a similar level of service, and lower the village rate. I think we've um, done everything. We've checked the box for all of those things, so when we come back at your next um, budget workshop, I think we'll reiterate and, and run through some of those things. Um, terminology for your capital improvement plan, Big one is capital assets, and of course the GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association, defines capital assets as assets of significant value and having a useful lifespan of several years. In the finance department, we define that as anything over five years. Um, and then next, we want to take a quick overview um, by graph, a, a look at your capital summary. And I'll just run through a couple of those things. And I want to point out also is that the categories here may not line up exactly with what you may anticipate. For example, public buildings, um, the title there should say public buildings and facilities. That also includes the seaplane base rebuild. So I just want to point out some of those things. And just as a, as a help to you all, your beautification, um, item there would include the Chris Daniels Fountain, it would include, include right-of-way improvements, it would include um, Main Street improvements and St. Clair um, improvements for beautification. Economic development would include um, Tiberi Square, it would include parking garage, it would include an RV pocket park. Your public buildings and facilities would include the public work, the solid waste public works joint um, use facility, the seaplane based rebuild project, and Wooten. Uh, Wonderland because it's a facility. Once it becomes built, then it becomes moves into the parks and recreation component of our uh, functional activities. Um, transportation would include your road improvements, um, new roads, and or um, repaving alleyways, traffic signals, um, street lights. If we're um, putting those uh, up on the streets. Um, and then potable water, sanitary sewer, reuse, solid waste, storm water, I think are pretty um, explanatory. Um, your general government is more smaller um, projects and includes anything that would be um, funded through grants or general government debt as well. Moving on to the next page is an overview by category. You just saw the graph. This is looking at all the projects, five of categories that are in your CIP. The total amount of your CIP is $91,638,086. And as you can see, for fiscal year 2021, the CIP budget is $12,176,906. You've got stormwater solid waste, water reuse, and you've got the um, water facilities and improvements and wastewater facilities improvements, one of those being your Lake Francis project. Moving on to projects already in progress, we thought this might be um, of interest to Council to kind of take a look at some of the projects that are ongoing. Um, as you can see, there are quite a few. We've got wayfinding signs. We just um, are, we are in the process of finalizing police vehicle purchases, which was authorized through a recent debt obligation uh, approved by this board. Um, cemetery restrooms. Um, Chris Daniels Memorial Pond Landscaping, and I believe a grant is paying for most of that. Um, we've got the Wooten Wonderland demo design and construction. We have um, debt funding for that as well as grant funding, so we have two funding sources. 
We've got bocce ball courts, pickleball courts. We've got the history, history museum. It's not a large project, but, but there will be some improvements to the train station for the museum. And we have the Lake Francis water upgrades and the Lake Francis wastewater project. And that project is well over seven million, and that's the one that you approved. That you approved the water portion tonight for the for the extension of the loan term as well as the um, amount of the project. And the amounts that you see in the CIP includes the amount that's authorized, including contingencies, if it's funded by debt service. Splash Park, Splash Park Rehabilitation is also included on that uh, front page. Now if we move on to the next page and we look at some general government highlights, projects, we bolded some of the, the projects that we thought may be of most interest. Countywide public safety radios for police and fire. That is ongoing for the next five years. Um, we also have road paving improvements. 2021, we have 130,000 in your uh, proposed budget. And then and as you look, we are proposing or hoping that in future years we have additional funding to really um, do additional paving in out years. And then major collections for our library. Current year has $40,040 for our collections, and we're hoping to raise that over the next five years. And again, this is a plan for the future. This is subject to change every year as we bring the budget back to council for your approval and review. Then if we look at the next page, we look at enterprise funds. This does not include all capital items, but it includes a lot of the projects that might be of interest. And we've bolted some that are of particular interest. The Avalon Booster Pump Station um, design, there's a project there for 800000 We have um, a Lane Park expansion, a million five, and I believe we've identified impact fees for that project. We have a replacement of a CCTV trailer that's in your 2021 budget, 275000 And we have the Solid Waste Joint Use Facility for $7 million. And Sinclair Avenue drainage improvement construction, 500,000. Dykes Drive drainage improvement design for 40,000. So those are just some highlights we thought may be of interest. And then if we move on in the PowerPoint, we can look at things that are in the future that really do not have an intersection with the current uh, budget year. And there are several projects of interest. We have Tiberi Square Water Feature construction. And I think we have that on our deferred list. Um, installation of event power on Ruby Street. Um, that was a, a council priority, and I believe that's also listed on our um, deferred list. We have some alleyway improvements in the out years. We have West Main Street streetscape uh, gateway feature on our out 2021 20, 2022 20, that we're hoping maybe we can take another look at that project. Again, this is a plan. Pavement preservation. Uh, rejuvenation. Um, we have that listed in our um, CIP for the next five years. We have a parking rack, a garage on the CIP for the next uh, five years that we're hoping that we can um, look to, to begin plans for. Um, and then at the bottom there's of course the senior center which has come before the board which we're looking at grants to hopefully fund that project. And then if you move on, move on to the next page we look at some um, additional large projects, um, including old 441 Walker, David Walker to Bay expansion of water uh, water lines, and then we have expansion of sewer lines in the same. Uh, excuse me, expansion and upgrades of our water wastewater treatment plant. The last time we did an upgrade was in 2005, and that was funded by state revolving loan funds. We have waste, um, old 441 David Walker Bay expansion, some sewer lines that are uh, on our CIP for how years. Again, this is to give you a good idea, uh, just a snapshot of some of the projects that are out there that may be of interest to you as we move through the budget process, as we move through the plans and how we come back next year. Then we'll review with city manager and with city council for your priorities. Hopefully I've answered a lot of questions and drawn your, drawn your attention to a lot of the projects that are out there. Thank you, Ms. Wilton. And I did have one request from the audience. Uh, Mr. Yeoman, if you please come forward.
board to see your full name and address for the record and keep your move to your three minutes. Uh, Vance, Yoko, 12619 Milwaukee Avenue. Um, I, you know, this wasn't in the uh, online agenda, so I didn't know what you're going to have. And I thought that there would be a matching here of revenues towards the capital plan. And uh, that you're relying in on revenues that you've already discussed in the past. Um, and my question would be that I was at a planning zoning meeting recently, and you've had some things that are in the pipeline coming to you for a second reading when we can give you feedback. But they're going to be generating a lot of traffic on Highway 19. Now, as Ms. Wiggis will point out, uh, I don't live in Tavares, but I'm completely surrounded by Tavares. I'm in an enclave. I pay sales taxes to everybody around me. I, I pay for uh, Tavares water. And it's my belief that you guys need to be more responsible in uh, planning and zoning issues and putting more money into transportation, transportation infrastructure starting this year and not uh, some of these other things that could be deferred, um, whether you have the funds and the revenues or not. But uh, I really think you need to focus on solving the transportation problems because you're just going to be killing that Highway 19. And uh, that came up when we had quite a discussion about it uh, at the planning and zoning meeting recently. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Yip. We'd love to have you annex in. Thanks. I already asked. It cost me like 12 grand. I mean, it's a drop in the bucket, but it'll be a little budget. Hi, <laughs> Eric. I can add for council's benefit. Um, on the second page of your full CIP plan and page 474 of your budget document, there is a schedule of capital projects with recommended funding sources that are anticipated or planned for some of those projects. Yeah, I, I wanted to point that out. In your budget, you have the full capital plug program. It has the entire um, uh, revenues associated with it, and we'll, we'll be uploading the whole budget online. Um, when they finalize it, correct? We will budget, but we will upload ADA, what we can for ADA compliance. Great. And anyone can request a copy of the full budget at any time, and all those revenues are identified. And uh, as it relates to State Road 19, of course, you know we've been involved in every meeting. It's a state road. They plan on four laning it. They've got a huge plan for it. Phase one was the bridge. The next is land acquisition, relocating the utilities, widening and taking care of it. So he makes a good point. State Road 19 needs a lot of uh, work, and we're glad that the state of Florida has been doing that work for the last three years. And I think I've seen you in some of those meetings um, and seen some of you at those meetings. So we've um, got a great plan, or the state has a great plan for uh, State Road 19's future as well. Thank you, Mr. Drew. Uh, I don't have any other requests to speak from the audience, so I'll close uh, in book about the public. Uh, Council, do you have any questions on the presentation? Just one thing. Ms. Allen, Brett, no cats this time. <laughs> we were looking for the cats. It's there. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and since we're on the topic of the budget, does anyone have any questions regarding the budget before we move off of this topic? I just want to say that I spent one whole day with my budget trying to find that four hundred thousand dollars and I hadn't had much luck. I found about I found about ten percent of it so far, but I'm still working at it. All right. Um, so if we have no further discussion, and I will move on to new business. Is there any new business? Seeing no new business, we'll move on to old business. Is there any old business? Um, so the old business will move on to audience to be heard, and I have one request for Mr. Sirdar. Please remember Mr. Sirdar yes. to say your full name and your address for the clerk. And then you only have three minutes, and I will have to cut you off. If you're with Mr. Holcomb and say what city you live in, because we have a message. But it must be Tavares. It's a problem by Tavares. Once again, please say your full name. Hey, I'll take Sirdar. 
Yes, every time. David Sturmer, 66 Winter Green Drive, Park, Florida, 34731. And you're trying to start it. Right. And David Sturmer says, Commissioner, it is the year of election time. And you are the county seat. And there's a lot of science out there. And a lot of people running for office. You know, I'm running into people all over. I, I may be appointed at St. John's Water Water Man's. The virus is out there. I was in the city of Ocala yesterday at the city council meeting. It was 5 or 6 o'clock. And uh, I had the agenda with the time on it, but the sheriff was three women was there. They voted for one for this to be four. And uh, I think Orange County did the same thing. The virus is out there. And you know, it's a terrible thing. When you're doing your budget, and I see almost 40% of the time to do with war. I might be appointed to take time to walk that. Steve Bartlett, the vice chairman of the Lake County Water Authority, he has to be appointed also, because there's only four people on the board now. Can't perform a quorum. Four of nine. I work with Mr. Ombuds and Mr. Lambert. You know, our police officers. We got to thank them. Thank the officers um, for being first responders, because we're on the country. I watch these things on TV. You know, leaders lead. You lead the city plan. There are people running for representative. There are people, well, I've been to Hernando County and Citrus County. And I could have been to the Lake County, or to the same guy for the Water Management District. And Mr. Lambert called me on a Sunday, but he didn't leave anything. The ombudsman. Um, you know, Mr. Farmer's wife is running for school board. Sandy Campbell's running for school board. I go to school board meetings. Mr. Cruz, a police officer out of my doors, running all for the same position. Great people. And people that need to put signs up because I got so many cars and TV people. Oh, uh, I've been filmed here. Nothing gets put on TV. And the Daily Journal. They filmed me yesterday from the Star Banner. Well, Star Banner is an editor, is uh, Jim Ross. Now I wonder if I got on because they filmed me uh, or, or took pictures of me. You know, I'm running into people that are congressmen. Congressman Daniel Webster knows me. I've been to his whole other traditional district. Uh, Senator Baxter called me his buddy, Representative Hay. Makes uh, office, makes calls for me. Uh, apparently, they said so. But Chief Perry is up there, also a district uh, senator. And when you get appointed by the governor, do you yeah, say John for the Well, what I'm asking you, water is important. If you ever had time to write, I'm a senior citizen. Somebody told me I'm as old as you're, I turned 65 the other day. And, uh, you know, it's just a great thing to be able to be in the city of Tavares when they had the jet ski contest the other day on a weekend. What a beautiful event that was. But every event, who knows what is going to happen. You know, time is now. Um, right, who, Mr. Server, your, your time, time is up. Your time is up. Time is up. Thank you for coming to the city today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you meeting and happy birthday. Hey, Jimmy. And is there anyone else from the audience who'd like to be heard? Mr. Santorio. Mr. Sir, can you please make space for I'm trying to get myself here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Mr. Santorio, you have to call that. I'm also timing you, Mr. Santorio. Please say your name and address for the record. Mayor, members of the council, Mr. Jury, city staff, Mr. Wimp, Gary Santorio, Royal Harbor. A question. Uh, and they were going through the design phase for Highway. State Road 19, 19 redone. And I know the plan is done. At the time, they said that they were not going to be responsible for moving the lift station. It would be the city's responsibility. At what point do we start putting some money aside for that? Because who knows when the state's going to say, okay, we're starting to move your lift station. Yeah, we're looking at that very uh, closely. It's a 20-year plan. I think they have a 10-year window for that. And we are very concerned about it. We are really working with our legislators to change the law on relocating um, lines. Uh, there was a time where they would pay for that. Uh, there was legislation passed recently that says now municipalities are responsible for relocating lines when the state comes in. And I'm hopeful that before we get too involved in that project, the legislation gets put back to the way it was. When the state does a widening project, they pay for the relocation of lines. That is a very good issue you brought up, and it is one that concerns us. Yeah, I just don't want to see it get brought because you never know when the state's going to do something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Santora. Uh, anyone else from the audience? All right, 
and then I'm going to close uh, that portion, uh, and we're going to move on to reports. Mr. Jury. Uh, really just to echo what Mr. Santora said about appreciating our um, first responders who are out there every day, um, you know, uh, facing the COVID things, uh, as he brought out. Uh, it's, uh, it's really appreciated uh, what our first responders uh, do because they interact directly with people, no social distancing, you know, they're, they're right there um, having to give up social distancing and things of that nature. Uh, and we do everything we can to protect them. So thank you to the first responders and all the city employees um, who come in every day and uh, uh, do what we do to keep this city going and work with the city council to balance um, having events and not having events. As Mr. Sarr said, we had a small event uh, and that was uh, nice to have. And I think it went very well. And they stayed in our hotels and they went to our restaurants and. It was off to the corner, and it was small, it was contained, and uh, the board's approved another small event, and we'll do that event too in October, and it'll be contained in a certain area. And the large events, yeah, they're on postponement for now, you know, they'll, they'll come back when this thing's over. Uh, but I do want to just point out that uh, you've got some great city uh, employees here who come to work every day, interact with the public, uh, do the best we can to keep this city going. Uh, and working with you to balance what is the right thing to do during COVID-19. Uh, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Drew. Uh, Ms. Novak? Nothing here. Thank you. Chief? Nothing here. Mr. Dillon? Nothing here. Mr. Sarah? Nothing here. Mr. Clark? Nothing there. Mr. O'Keefe? You're good. Mr. Aldridge? Good.
Well, I wonder how your wife feels about you announcing publicly for age. I know I would take that a little personal. <laughs> uh, uh, when you get to the age that we are, you're just glad you're you wake up and have a pulse. Okay. Well said. Thank you. Um, on another note, I'd like to uh, present our positive quote for the evening today, and that is, attitude is a choice, happiness is a choice, optimism is a choice, Kindness is a choice. Giving is a choice. Respect is a choice. Whatever choice you make, choose wisely. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Lees. Uh, Mr. Singer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to report that uh, it's my hope and desire that I will be joining you live at our next council meeting. Uh, but I do want to uh, once again just uh, thank you, Mayor, thank my fellow council members and the staff for your leniency and uh, allowing me to zoom into these meetings. Um, it's been uh, a little difficult, but uh, I just uh, appreciate participating in the process and uh, just uh, look forward to seeing everybody in person in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Senior. I know Ms. Biggis and I are looking forward to you not looking over our shoulder on a giant television. So, um, <laughs> so, thank you. Can I ask one question? How's the rehab going, Troy? It's going well, just a slow, a slow uh, arduous process, but uh, making progress every day. It's uh, just been range of motion right now. Uh, Can you raise your arm up over your head and wave it around? Yeah. Uh, a little bit. I can go about like that. <laughs>